Welcome back to Tetracan Super Monoblock. This will be the first in a series of videos about the Tascam Porter Studio 246. If you're new to the channel, then I take these things apart. I tend to have a format where I disassemble them, change any belts. By these things, by the way, I mean cassette multi-track recorders. And I also do videos on more specific topics to do with electrical repair. So often I'm dealing with units that I haven't really seen before. 246 is one that I'm a bit more familiar with, although um, I probably haven't actually been inside one of these for about 18 months at the time of filming. Uh, this unit belongs to me. As you can see, it's missing a door. Uh, Rob Freeman, you promised me a door. I sent you the LEDs that you asked for. Where's my door? Get it in the post, thanks. What was the other thing I was gonna say before I started? Yeah, I wonder if you can see there's a very slight indentation. I will mention it when I get to the relevant part of the deconstruction of this, um, but you're gonna find that there's two lengths of screws that are generally used to attach to plastic mounting posts inside these shorter ones and longer ones. The longer ones are only longer by about three or four millimeters, but if you use those, longer ones and you screw them in tight then you're actually going to make little indentations on the far side of the plastic case so i'll mention that again when we get there parts of this are very similar to the 244 before i turn this over and put a pillow down so we can take the back case off if you are going to go ahead and clean the mixer then these knobs are going to need to come off you can leave any of these push button ones you don't need to take the end caps off of these three-way switches but any of these knobs will pull off from the front. Sometimes they're a bit stiff. Um, you can use a V cut out of a credit card, old credit card, to get underneath them and that will lift them up without um, damaging the case. I'll go ahead and remove the rest of those knobs and come back to the footage once it's flipped over. So you're going to be removing 11 screws like this from the back of your 246. Um, if you've got the original screws, then they're going to be looking something like this. Black, raised area on the head, Phillips head, narrow ferrule, and uh, the location of those screws are marked with white tape. Um, three on the back here, two on either side, one in the center, and three along the lip nearest the front of the unit. The way that comes off, I'll just move this to show you. And the mains cable is actually running through a hole in the back of the unit. So um, if you want to remove it completely, you need to thread that through there. And this large board facing you has the record and the playback amplifiers on it. The six mixer channels are below that. There's also a pair of boards here and they've got some stuff to do with monitoring on them, some stuff to do with which of the four tracks of the tape are armed for recording. This is the uh, filtering and rectification from the transformer, which is underneath. This is a US model. If you had a UK model, then there would be a little metal bracket here and you would have some slow blow fuses here. The regulations are different in the EU, in the UK, the US, they don't require it, which is why those fuses are absent from this model. It may be when you first open this that these cables um, coming from the power supply to the control boards are attached via a couple of cable ties to the side of this transport chassis. You can just cut that with a sharp scissors or a Stanley knife. Moving that out of the way, we can see that there's uh, one large ribbon cable coming from the transport here. Um, you can pull that out by the strength of its own wires. The little daughter board for pitch control. Um, this is different to the 244. I was saying earlier that most of my 244 videos will apply to this. Um, but I hope you can see in there there's two little trim pots for your fast and low speed. So you can um, use a little ceramic screwdriver in there to make sure that when the master pitch control is at 12 o'clock, the speed of your tape is at three and three quarters inches per second or one and seven eighth inches per second, respectively. Um, you would do that by using a test tape that is playing back at, say, 1000 hertz. Um, attach a frequency counter to one of the tape outs and uh, 
adjust that until what you're getting was as close as you can get to 1000 hertz or whatever the frequency of the test tape is. Anyway, that little daughter board has a cable here that needs to be pulled out. It's running um, to the pitch control, which is in the lower of two um, control boards here. If you had the UK EU model, then you would need to detach the fuse daughter board, which would be sitting here from the metal bracket via two screws and just let it dangle there. This one, we don't have the fuses, so I can just pull that out. Cable from in between these three voltage regulators on the power board. And in order to detach the transport from the metal chassis below it, um, there are one, two, three, four, five screws. I'm using a magnetized screwdriver to pull these out as they fall into the chassis. You can end up getting them caught between the uh, front plastic case and the metal chassis, which is a real pain in the neck. So watch out for that. With those five screws removed, Providing that your um, head array is lowered, and if it isn't lowered, say, um, you know, this control belt snapped while the head were in the upper position, you could lower it by turning this reduction wheel manually. But on mine, I know that it's low, so you just need to push it this way a little bit so that the heads don't catch. And then that will lift out. I've just realised that I haven't removed the various connections to the play and record board so let's just pull those out the erase and record heads go into the same socket for each channel and the color coding is the same as what you used for resistors so brown is one red is two orange is three and yellow is four so that's tracks one two three four these cables are a little bit fragile so i would pull the plastic at the sides of the plugs rather than use the strength of the wire themselves and just rock them back and forth, side to side, and they should come out with your fingers. Now you can see in this case, <laughs> this uh, wire st strung through there. If someone's been in you there before, maybe you need to unplug something else. But that's not cables not to do with the transport, and that's the transport completely free. So you can get in there and change all the rubber parts. You can already see that I've got adapted. Uh, idler tires, I've replaced the rubber pinch reel, pinch roller, sorry, and I've got control belt and a healthy capstan belt installed. Again, refer to my 244 videos if you're not sure how to do that.